Welcome to the Richardson Center Corporation and the Richardson Olmsted National Historic Site. We're going to talk a little bit about the past, present, and future of the Richardson Olmsted complex. But I like to start the scene by taking you back in time, kind of giving a historical perspective of how this came to be. The Richardson Olmsted Complex is a 140-year-old building that started as the Buffalo State Asylum for the Insane, but it was quickly changed to Buffalo State Hospital, as it's most commonly known now. And uh, it was really a place of hope and healing for people with mental illness many years ago, at a time when people with mental illness were not treated very well. The planning for it started in the 1860s and ground was broken in 1871. It's a massive complex, it's 500,000 square feet. It actually took 25 years to build, so it finished in 1896. The building was the brainchild of physician Thomas Kirkbride, who believed the building and its surroundings were an integral part of the treatment process. He hired architect H.H. H. Richardson and landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted to realize his vision. When you combine Richardson Olmsted, that that is a powerful connection that you know that that's hard to replicate anywhere in the country. You know, Richardson was the father of American architecture. If there wasn't a Richardson, there may not have been a Louis Sullivan or a Frank Lloyd Wright. He was the foundation on which we all stand. And similarly, Olmsted is our foundation for, for the landscape architecture community. He established, set the tone for all of the uh, landscape architects to follow. So the combination of these two great men together, it's a very difficult uh, project to duplicate. Frederick Law Olmsted was familiar with Buffalo because he was here designing more than a thousand acres of parks and interconnected parkways in the city, which was really the first and oldest parkway system of its kind. So Kirkbride's uh, theory was about this notion that the site, that the landscape should be a part of the therapy was very important. He felt that enjoyment of nature was such an important aspect of, of enjoying life. So obviously the patients you know, were living here around the clock, and so this would be the only green space that they would have access to. Now, Olmsted came from a nature-loving family, and he believed strongly in the healing power of nature. And so to that end, he really had almost a soulmate in Thomas Kirkbride, who also believed in the healing power of nature. Olmsted helped to select this site for the hospital, so he was very instrumental in creating this great large green space that the city has grown up around, and it really gives us now an opportunity in a dense urban area to have some wonderful uh, recreation and nature spaces to enjoy. The Buffalo State Hospital operated for almost 100 years. By the 1970s, the hospital was shut down. The once grand building was neglected and slowly began to deteriorate. In 2006, the Richardson Center Corporation formed with the intent to restore the building to its former glory. The corporation conducted a master plan study to look at the reuse of the entire complex and the grounds. So from the master plan, it was decided that the complex would be a mixed-use facility, phase one of that being a hotel conference center um, and the architecture center. And it was determined that the South Lawn, being such an important aspect of the Richardson Olmsted experience, should be maintained and restored back to its original grandeur. And so as part of the first phase of development, the Richardson Center Corporation knew uh, that a big piece of that would be regreening the site. And um, really the great thing about it is it really turned the look of the building from something uh, sort of foreboding to a really welcoming space. We decided from the beginning that we wanted to restore as much of the Olmsted experience as we could and then reinterpret the existing facility 
in an Olmsted manner. So our landscape architect used Olmstedian values and design principles and reimagined uh, the park so that it, it felt like an Olmsted garden. Although there was a significant amount lost in terms of the grounds, uh, there was enough kind of of the bones to, to reimagine what would Olmsted do if he uh, could recreate it today. So we really wanted to give it that flavor, but also for it to be contemporary and functional and usable and, and welcoming. We always say, what would Olmsted do? That's, that's our key saying. I think he would look and say, yes, I approve. I see my signature on this property. I think he would have a really keen appreciation for how we tried to take what he did and make the front entry sort of a welcoming, soothing place and, and to recreate it into that again. While much of what Olmsted created on the South Lawn has been lost to time, two prominent elements still exist. On the South Lawn here, we have two of the eight trees that we know were planted uh, around Olmsted's time or before. There's an ash that's at one end of the property and then there's an oak tree. We spent a considerable amount of time creating infrastructure around them to preserve them, fertilize them, et cetera, and they're, they're very healthy. And essentially the design was built, designed around restoring those trees and highlighting those trees. The two ancient trees that stand on the property exemplify the desire to honor the past while bringing the site into the future. It's part of the larger picture of Buffalo's resurgence. Buffalo was a bustling, rich, exciting place in the late 1800s, early 1900s. We all know there's been some difficulties, but really the refocus on our terrific assets has helped us to kind of believe in ourselves again. We still play in the gardens that Olmsted designed. There are still trees that we play under that Olmsted selected. I feel that Olmsted has touched uh, Buffalonians more than any, anyone else because he laid the framework Buffalo is, um, has learned to capitalize on its assets of art and architecture and its landscape and its built environment. And I think Olmsted is definitely a, a piece of that puzzle of how Buffalo can remake and reimagine itself as a destination that people from all over the country want to visit, someplace that is special and moving beyond our manufacturing past. I hope that they appreciate the fact that there's been another nine acres that have been uh, of, of Olmsted Garden that has been returned to, the, to Buffalo. Um, I hope that they feel a special connection to an Olmsted designed a site that they might not have. I hope that they enjoy the amenities. I, you know, I, as long as they come and they, they find respite here, I think we'll have done our job. <laughs>